Hello, my name is Amy Ecker and welcome to my channel. So I'm doing some more dupe videos. Dupe, there it is. So anyways, today we are using the palette Solstice from Bad Habit going against the Natasha Denona palette. Don't you just want to say it like that? Natasha Denona. Okay, I was whispering. Anyways, I really love the Natasha Denona palette. It is absolutely stunning. I love the presentation. It almost looks like it's in leather, which is fantastic. You open it up. It does have a mirror. I'm going to try not to blind you. It also has this little palette on the inside or this little piece on the inside that gives all the names. Love it. And then you get into this little beautiful golden goodness. And it does have colors that look just like a sunset. Absolutely love, love, love. Love this palette. And I used it on this eye. So the one thing that I will say about the Natasha palette is it goes on. You don't have to bang your brush, tap your brush, whatever you do with a palette that has a lot of fallout. You don't have to do it on this one. It is just creamy goodness. I mean, it just blends well. It goes on well. It just is fantastic. So I use these colors here, here, and here. So I use five colors to complete this eye look over here. And then I went in with the Bad Habit Solstice Palette. I thought at first glance the Solstice Palette was a lot closer in color to the Natasha Denona Palette and just had, you know, whoop, just had some way smaller pan sizes. Um, but when I actually went in to do the eye look, I had to really concentrate a little bit harder on what colors in here match the Natasha Denona palette. So the colors here weren't as, say, peachy as the ones that I used. And so maybe that's not even the right word, but I really, really had a hard time at first trying to figure out, oh my God, what colors did I use in the Natasha palette that is the closest to this one? I think for the most part, when you get into the darker colors, it, it really stands out, but the colors I used, it just was a little bit difficult at first, like I said. Then I went in to do my eyes, and this palette does have a lot more fallout. Um, Natasha's doesn't, Solstice does. So you have to be really careful when you're putting on the the eye. And I didn't tap my brush good enough. These are really pigmented also. So you have fallout with pigmentation and I, I got a little bit of skipping going on. So I really had to use a clean brush to go ahead and blend that out where I did it on this one. And I don't know if you can, yes. all right, I did smooth it out. So when I tilt my head back and look in a mirror, I can always tell where it skips or where it doesn't blend as well. So I did fix that one and, and kind of get it blended out really good. As far as the color um, Dawn, was it Dawn or Twilight that I popped on the eye, it went on really nice. Overall, I think that the Solstice palette, when you look at the colors, are close to N Natasha's colors overall. Um, it is a 15 color eyeshadow palette. The price is absolutely amazing. I mean, if you love these colors and you can work with Fallout and you're careful, these are really, really good. Now, between the two, I'm still going on the side of Natasha in this case. I love how they blend. I love how they're effortless. The thing that I don't like about this palette, obviously, is the price. So the price is kind of off the hook. Um, again, I love that outer side, but I don't carry my palettes around by my face. So even though this has a beautiful exterior, I'm okay with having an exterior that is, you know, cardboard if the palette performs. Um, I don't necessarily need the palette to be as gorgeous if it's gonna save me on price. So that's where I get a little price conscious. But I really, overall, I love Natasha's eyeshadows. They, again, no fallout. 
they've got good color, they blend well. What more could you ask for except they're super they're super expensive compared to the Solstice palette. If you work with it a little bit and you're careful, you can create the, the same eye look, which is, you know, that's what we like to do. We like to recreate eye looks and we like doing it on a budget. So I'm really torn, to be honest with you, between the two. Um, I love the performance of Natasha, but I don't like the price. I love the colors in the Solstice, but I didn't necessarily like the fallout and the skipping and the having to be really careful. So after using the Natasha palette, it was like, oh, maybe I should have started with the Solstice palette. But again, it's the price on the Solstice. You get a, a good dupe for basically a tenth of the price, about a tenth of the price. So, you know, I can work with a, a, an eye that falls out um, but is pigmented for a tenth of the price. So anyways, I don't think that I really helped the viewers here today because I just feel torn in two different directions, one on quality, one on price. So this palette, I'm going to have to leave up to you as far as what you want to purchase. I do want to hear your comments or your thoughts. So what did you think about the two? Did they match pretty well overall? Is um, one palette something that you would order or purchase more so than another palette? If so, why? I'm dying to hear your comments. So anyways, if you can leave your comments and thoughts below, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna learn how I created this eye look or this face look total, cause I did keep going, you're in the right place, so stay tuned. All right, let's get started. I am going to start with this color here, which is Bermuda. It's kind of a nice peachy color. And I think actually I'm going to do that all over the lid. Because it is such a pretty light color, it'll be easy to blend up off of. All right, the next color I'm going to use is this one here, which is Volcano, I believe. Volcano. And I just kind of dabbed into the eyeshadow. And I'm just going to take time building it up into that crease. I like these shadows because they do blend well and I don't get a lot of fallout, which is nice. And so far I'm just using the same brush. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and build up the outer V with this color brown here. And that should be called Ingenious. blend so nice and go for a flatter brush with this color here and that color is called atmosphere on the other side of that flat brush I'm going to pick up this white and dab that up underneath the eyebrow bone and in the inner corner kind of br brushing up in that little crease I'm also going to take that white and just go right there. I'm going to pick up this color here. We're just going to put that on the lower lash line. The reason why I close my eyes when I'm doing my lower lash line is because if any product gets in my eyes because I've got really sensitive eyes, it just sets them off. And I'm trying not to set them off today. Okay, so that gives kind of a nice little halo. And I'm trying to debate between this color here and this color here. I think this one might be the better one. So I'm just going to dab that on my ring finger. And just put that right on the lid there for an extra bit of shimmer. Okay, now we're going to try to recreate this on this side with the Solstice palette. 
Okay, so we're gonna start out with a color here called Spring. And this has a lot of fallout in comparison, so I'm gonna have to be really careful. It is blending nice though, so that's good. Looks like a good match so far. Now I'm gonna pick up this color here called Dusk. And this one seems to be skipping more, so it may take a moment to, in fact, let me get a clean brush and we'll blend. We're gonna take the color Eclipse for the outer V. And this has a lot of pigment in it, so I'm gonna pick back up that blending brush or that clean brush and just kind of blend those out. So I don't want it to look like it's skipped. I may pick up a little bit more of that spring color we first started with. Kind of help that along. On a flat brush, we are going to pick up the color Golden Hour. Oop. I should have tapped my brush. It's just falling on my face. I'm going to take that golden hour and that's going to go on the lower lash line. Those look pretty good, pretty close. On the other side of that, I'm going to take the color winter and go up underneath my eyebrow bone. And this one seems to have a bit more pigment than, or is brighter maybe? I don't know, it's going on easier. You can kind of see the difference there. I'm going to pick up the color Twilight here and dab on my eye. I'm taking a little clean wipe and I'm just going to wipe up to clean that up just a bit on both sides. I think because the eye is typically a little bit lighter than what I normally go for. So far it's lighter. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna pick up the Makeup Geek Spice to go on the inner waterline. I'm gonna take the Marc Jacobs pencil. This is in the color Earthquake. And I'm not really worried about being that precise. I'm gonna take another brush and I'm just gonna kinda smudge that out. Okay, so we got that going so far. Now I'm gonna try the Bad Gal Bang from Benefit. I tried this the other day and wasn't impressed. I'm just hoping I had one of those kind of off days. I have some eyelashes now on. The mascara went a little bit everywhere. Yay, right? We love when it goes everywhere. I'm gonna use the It Brow Power pencil to draw in some hair-like hair-like motions, that doesn't make sense. Using hair-like strokes to kind of fill in a little bit. I'm now going to use the liquid camouflage for the under eye, my nose and forehead, a little bit on the chin. Okay, so now we're gonna set the nose, under eye area and chin with the Wonder 2 Perfect Selfie Powder. To finish off this look, I'm gonna use Makeup Geek. So this was in the Flawlessly Ever After Porcelain Princess Palette. I'm gonna use a Morphe brush to pick up the contour. And then I'm just gonna use this angle brush from Morphe to kind of blend it out. And some for the forehead or five head as I lovingly call it. And we're gonna erase that double chin. I pick up another Morphe brush and I think I am gonna go with a little bit of both the peach and the pink, which is First Crush and Sweetheart. And I did get a little bit of mascara underneath there, which I'm gonna have to flick off. Okay, for our highlighter, we're gonna pick up the color Trist. I think I'm gonna go for a bold lip today. Watch out. 
I'm gonna use the Makeup Geek. This is Free Spirit out of the Plush Cream Lippies. And basically that completes this look. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on, do my hair. I'm still debating about this lip. I have a, I wanna do a bold lip. I wanna get outside my comfort zone, but I'm outside my comfort zone. So yeah, I'm outside my comfort zone. We may put a topper on this. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then determine if I'm gonna put a topper on it. But in the meantime, I'm going to go do my hair and then I'll be Thank back. you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this head-to-head, eye-to-eye video using the Solstice palette from Bad Habit versus the Sunset palette from Natasha Denona. God, I love saying her name. It's just a great name. But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing or refer me to a friend. And as always, you have a choice, so make it a great one. Until next time.